It's news time. Information is power. The current. The news headline. Kanu refused new clothes. DSS tells court. That's a lie. Uzekumi fires back. The news in full. Contrary to yesterday's order by Justice Binta Iyako, that the retained leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Ipo, in Kanu, should not appear in court today in the same friendly designer's clothes he has been wearing since June last year when he was arrested. Kanu was on same clothes today, sparking a debate over why our order was flouted. The prosecution team told the court that provision was made for a change of clothing for Kanu, but that the IPOP leader rejected them on grounds that he preferred the designer's Fendi he had on. However, Kanu's led counsel, Chief Mike Ozekome, told the court that it was not true that his clients insisted on wearing his designer clothes. Tuesday, yesterday, Justice Inyako ordered, I don't want to see him in these clothes again. And this is almost off-white. Also, make sure you allow him to exercise and give him a good mattress. But when the matter was called up on today, the prosecution counsel, Mr. Shuaibu Labaron, told the court that Kanu was the one that chose to wear his designer Fendi clothes. He said, My lord, based on your order yesterday, we provided defendants with a new orthopedic mattress, pillows, and blankets. As for his appearance, he chose to wear this particular one because he said that it is designers. Reacting, Ozekome told the court that it was not true that his client insisted on wearing his designer clothes. My lord, what happened was that by the time proceedings ended yesterday, and because it was not his visiting day, we were not able to pass him some clothes we obtained for him. And uh, we even discussed it with him this morning, and he said that on the next visiting day, he would want to have the new clothes, Ozekome added. He, however, commended the DSS for providing the IPOP leader with new mattress and pillows. I want to commend the DSS and the courts for ensuring that it was done, the son added. Um, before allowing Kanu to be arraigned on the amended 15 count treasonable felony charge, the federal government preferred against him. Justice Ian Corey reiterated a demand for him to have a change of clothing. Kanu is therefore currently entering his plea to the fresh amended charge against him. Igbo leaders are uh, clamoring for the release of Inamde Kanu, suggesting that the total support of IPOB atrocities on Indigo and Nigeria as a nation. The Igbo think tank, in a statement on Sunday, said. It was deeply concerned that the people who are victims of the carnage done to the southeast region of the country would contemplate such a blind and unpatriotic narrative and was still take it to the presidency. Reacting to posers on telephone for further comment, Vice President of the Group Chief Chidi Anayo noted that in the book, I now see that Enamde Kanu was not alone in his fight against the Nigerian entity, which fight ultimately had given a bigger blow to the southeast region. We cannot sit here and watch away while our leaders are blackmailed and intimidated into emergency air voice to the presidential villa with request that no democratically elected president would consider Mr. Bo president Muhammad Buhari would be exposing the whole country to untold danger if it dares consider the release of Enam Kanu without a full and proper trial. The group said that rather than call for Kanu's release, we had expected the so-called Igbo leaders to advise on an open and transparent trial of their son who from all indications was on a lone mission. We commend governors who stood their ground in defiance of IPO senseless outings regardless of political and personal gains as we recover from the human's infrastructural economic losses uh, brought upon by IPOB and their leader. It is expected that our leaders will seek total reconstruction of region by the federal government instead of seek the release of a man who does not recognize Nigeria and our leadership. Is it not an irony for Inam Dekanu who said that Mr. President was dead and that Nigeria was a zoo, zoo to benefit from the benevolence of the same president while breaching the principle of separation of power. Why not urge their son to show remorse and act better in future? What has IPOP and their leader done to anyone for their sins against Indigo and Nigerian states? What becomes of the Nigerian sovereignty if elder leaders could rally around criminals to wage war against the states? Therefore, the uh, they have actually said that, you know, the group has said that during the time of Kanu's detention as a few, recent of few days, that the police station in Imo was raised and therefore Kanu must be made to face the rule of law. While making a case for the Biafra agitator, said that if the federal government could grant amnesty to repentant Boko Haram terrorists and the Niger Delta militants, there is nothing stopping it from considering the case of Inam de Kanu and also that of Sunday Adiemo Ibuhu. Speaking on Thursday during an interview on Chinese television, 
Obvious of argue that the Igbo people are not at war with the rest of Nigerians, urging that President Muhammadu Buhari needs to reconsider his stand not to re release the detained IPOB leader. He said that Enamdekanu, who is currently facing charges burden on treasonable felony and terrorism, deserves to be given another chance and forgiven as false. He has, uh, is a dangerous op option for everyone at this particular period in time. And that is one of the reasons why the former national chairman of the All Progressive Congress, APC, that is Comrade uh, Adam Sushiomole, had actually, you know, spoken to defend President Muhammad Buhari in this case, saying that he is actually doing his very best, uh, and that those people that are criticizing, you know, most of his regime are people that have always found pleasure in being toxic about the federal government of Nigeria. And Muhammad Buhari was seen as the nemesis of corrupt politicians, and that image, which could not help him during previous electoral attempts, was capitalized on by Southwest media to burnish and garnish a political reputation against an admittedly helplessly ghostless and hapless leadership of good luck Jonathan. But history is a mercilessly ruthless judge, while previously clueless and corrupt Jonathan has become a beautiful bride of international diplomacy and democratic behavior. The anti-corruption warrior is now my heart in a government that by its own reckoning has become the most inept and corrupt in our history. To be fair, the president did not promise much in the election elect electioneering campaigns in both elections. Throughout the campaigns, the mantra, his mantra, repeated like a broken record, was fighting corruption, insurgency, and improving the economy. His performance on all three counts is suspect, dubious, and undistinguished. Most people would even declare him a failure. By its own admission, even the government does not point to any of them as its main achievement, which is curious. To it, their greatest achievement is building infrastructure, which was a kind of an afterthought as it never featured in its 2015 election campaigns. The curiosity is how could one major in a subject on which he was not tested in an examination. On his greatest failure, agreement will be as difficult to reach. Insecurity has become a major menace in the country, and no part of his nation is spared. But because that is not his greatest failure, nor is the crumbling economy, which he was never given a chance in the first place. It has never been this bad since the war, and although President Mohamed Buhari was elected to deal with the problem of insurgency in his notice, his regime was added the nefarious activities of headsmen and now bandits who have not only made life brutishly short and unbearable for most rural communities, especially farmers who have abandoned their farms, which has led to the threat of food, scarcity and hunger in the country. The Nigerians are playing such humongous price on account of corruption in the public service in the government that promised to stamp it out is a monumental indictment of President Muhammad Buhari and his legitimacy for the office. The paradox is that for every extra cobo that goes into fictitious projects and salaries, there is a corresponding denial of public-oriented spending to improve people's lives.